your life and love your marriage. And today, we're going to be talking about emotional infidelity. It's not a topic I really like to talk about, but it's so key in our society that we know how to protect ourselves, protect our marriages, protect our relationships. And in particular, I'm going to be talking with the wives today. And so I want to um, just encourage you that, first off, the only person you can really change, let's remember, is yourself. You can't change your husband, but you can make circumstances so that he wants to spend more time with you. We've been talking about a lot of different things, and some of this is, is whoever wants to hang around a nagging, criticizing, condemning, complaining person. So hopefully you're learning not to do that. I know it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of challenge, and we can do that. But emotional infidelity is something that, that can destroy marriages. It's hard sometimes when you feel like your, your marriage has fallen apart to not reach out to someone else. But I want to tell you some ways that we can, we can prevent this and what we can do to help stop the problem. First off, let's define what emotional infidelity, infidelity is. And, and, and I tell you, I'm not used to calling it this word. I like to just call it getting emotionally attached to the wrong person. Getting emotionally involved, developing a, too close of a friendship with someone of the opposite sex. That's what I like to call it. That word infidelity, yeah, I, we can use that. We can not use that. But you know, when we get too close to somebody of the opposite sex, it really puts a strain on our relationship. Now, I'm not saying that, gals, you have to avoid all men and never talk to another man in your life, particularly when you're married. But there are ways we can get together and develop these friendships. So let's talk about what emotional infidelity is. It's when you develop a relationship with someone of the opposite sex that's not your spouse. So, gals, it's when you develop a relationship with a man that's not your husband that you are feeling closer to that man than you are to your husband and you start to develop a sexual attraction. Now, maybe you don't do anything about it. Usually when you do do something about it, that's called an affair, but we're not going to go there. We're going to talk about it's just that feeling part. And it finally feels like somebody you can talk to, somebody that understands what you're going through. Oh, boy. This is why I've said over and over again, that gals, we need girlfriends. We need a girlfriend that we can talk to and share our struggles with. We need good women coaches and, and counselors that can teach us how do we develop better relationships with our men so that we aren't tempted to go talk to someone else that we shouldn't be talking to and developing a close relationship. I'm not sorry and never talk to another guy, but we've got to have somebody to talk to. And sometimes your guy just doesn't understand. That's where a girlfriend can really help. And so can coaches and counselors. But this emotional infidelity that I'm talking about is when you get too close to someone that you're leaving your spouse out. Most often, one of the big ways of knowing if this is happening to you is you're keeping things secret. Your husband asks how you've had your day and how it's been. And you're telling about all the things you've done. But you forget to mention the phone conversations or text messages or um, how you ran on to him at the coffee shop. Or how at work you spent a little too much time with him. Or you went out to lunch with him, but you're telling your, your husband that you went out to lunch with the girlfriends. You know, one of the biggest detriments to our marriages is keeping secrets and telling lies. And it's the emotional infidelity is really one of those big places that you can tell when it's gone over the line from being friendship to being some kind of emotional attachment when you start to keep lies. So how do we make friends with guys? I, I can tell you from my own experience that um, before I married my husband, Aaron, I was previously married to an abusive guy, and I was searching for love in all the wrong places. And I started making attachments with guys that totally ruined my marriage, but uh, maybe my marriage was ruined to begin with because of the abuse. But once I got married to Aaron, I knew that there were certain people I just could not be alone with. You probably have these same feelings. We were, we were, when we lived in Huntsville, Alabama, and we had two little boys, I had, there was some guy from his work that came up and knocked on the door and he started talking to me. 
And I just started feeling so uncomfortable with this guy. He was like, he was coming on to me like nothing you could believe. And here I'm a married woman with two kids and happily married and a Christian woman at that. And this guy was just coming on to me. I very quickly, rapidly shut the door as quickly as I could. And I told my husband about it. Because see, part of this, when we have these conversations with people that make us, with guys that make us uncomfortable, we need to be sure and tell our husband about them. And so anyway, I told my husband about this. I said, I really don't want that guy to ever show up at my door again. And he didn't. My husband made sure of that. And just recently, <laughs> this has been 40 years later, probably about 35 years later. Maybe, I don't know, we had kids about 10 years into our marriage. So it might be even just it'd be, uh, 30 years later. But I was having lunch with a girlfriend over at a local snack bar. And I uh, sit there having a conversation. And, and this guy that I never really saw from across the room, because walking around, he says, I really love your hair. Fortunately, he didn't touch me. That's what I felt. He was getting really close. He was going to touch my shoulder. I was like, right. <laughs> good, thank you. I said, it's God given. And kind of just like backed away. You know, flirting is great when you're single. I'm not single. I'm a married lady. And if you're listening to me, most likely you are too. And how do we want to keep our marriages strong and make them last a lifetime? We have to develop close friendships with our husbands. And then we need good girlfriends that we can talk to. Things that we can talk about, things we can't talk with our husbands. Some of the things that just don't come. Up. But even so, I told my husband about that guy that came up and was commenting, made, commenting about my hair. I mean, I, I like the fact he liked my hair. But that was really not an appropriate comment for someone to say unless he knew I was single. And I wasn't. I'm not. Somebody else once said, they were in a group and said, man, you look really sexy at church. And we were in a small group and everybody turned and looked at that guy. because, like, like, And then we all looked away quietly and the conversation quickly changed. Again, an inappropriate comment. So we can recognize some of these inappropriate comments, but that's when they're coming from other people. What about when we start them? You know, some of the, some of the biggest times that, that, um, that churches fall apart and pastors fall down from is because they've had conversations with women in, in situations they haven't, and they've gone from a, a conversation or a coaching counseling con situation to a more intimate relationship. But maybe not physically, we're just talking emotionally. So we're talking about emotional abuse. Let's talk a little bit. I've had to look up a few things on this one because I wanted to make sure I got all the terms right. Uh, guys, you join me, Heather. Um, I hope, hoping some more people here do here soon. But emotional affair, this is from um, Sherry Strytoff, S-T-R-I-T-O-F, from Very Well Mind. It says that emotional affair generally starts innocently enough with a friendship. It's often a former platonic relationship. That means like a brother type relationship that begins to eventually form a strong emotional bond, which then causes the intimate, the, the, intimate, the, the sexual attraction to occur. Emotional affairs are gateway affairs. They're the entrance way into having a real sexual affair. So people say, oh, it's just, it's just a close friend. I just talked to him about things. You know, and so many times we do this because we haven't been able to talk to our husbands. But gals, I want to I want to teach you and show you how can you find ways to talk about that stuff without having to go to another guy. And what do you do when you want to talk to a guy? We were at one location and there was a, a guy, Chaplain Harp. He was a really awesome chaplain and he was a good friend of my husband's and mine at this uh, military base we were going to church at in Germany. And uh, there were several times I really needed to talk to him. Things were happening in my husband's career, happening with the ladies' ministries or in my own life. And I did enjoy talking with Chaplain Harp. But every time I talked to him, I usually I was over there usually on the days when our women's ministry had Bible study. And so there was a lot of ladies in the building. And we kept the door open. And I said he was on his side of the desk and I sat on my side of the desk and I and I told him about some of my struggles that happened and what I was challenged with. And he could give me some godly counsel and advice. But that was in a very appropriate way. There was no sexual attraction there. It was someone that I was wanting to talk with. You know, I, I'm going to say this, but I don't think as married women, we need to be alone with a married man unless he's a doctor or a dentist. And even so, there's usually people in the office. If I have to have a physical exam from a man, I like to, I like to, have, a, I like to have a female in the room, a nurse there, just as that protection. You know, you may not feel like you need that, but I do. Um, I do. I like to know that if I have a male dentist, that there's all these other 
dental assistants running around all over the place and you're in a public place. But what happens, Joyce, if, if I have a, a, a workman come to my house? Well, I'm going to tell you to trust the Holy Spirit within you. And if you feel uncomfortable with that person in your house, just invite them back when your husband's home or when the kids are home. Um, or don't call them back. Say, um, no, thank you. I'll call someone else that you're more comfortable with. You know, there's a brilliant that's so then how do we have relationships with men? Well, this is usually done, I think, in couple situations. Notice I'm talking to a married woman. Now, if you're single gals, you're going to want to figure out some way you can make good conversations and learn how learn to get to know some guys. But I'm not talking to the gals, guy, gals that are single. I'm talking to the gals that are married. And yes, couple relationships are awesome. And um, we, we like to be in a couple social groups. So we've been in couples Bible studies. We've done couple things together. And people say, yes, you can come when your husband's gone. And yes, sometimes when I've known the group well enough, I will do things by myself when my husband is gone because he travels a lot in the military. He still travels a lot with the book sales and the writing. But I don't want to have the group over to my house when my husband's not there. I did this a few times in the military. And what I did is I invited a girlfriend or she and her husband to come over and, um, and be with me in the house earlier before I knew anyone else would arrive. These are just little ways of protecting. Why do we need to protect ourselves like this? Because the evil one is tricky. And he wants to get us <laughs> caught in these situations we don't need to get caught in. I have another good couple friend, Jim and Terry. And, and every time Jim and I will get into some discussions about something or another, but every time Terry's there or Aaron's there, or both, usually it's all four of us together talking when we have these conversations. And sometimes, you know, Jim will question me. He was questioning me about what did I learn from my last medical surgery I went through. And I was like, ah. And so, you know, and so we have to watch these things, folks. Watch what you do. Be careful. I'll give you some other couple examples. Um, but let me, before I do that, before I give you some examples, let's go on a little bit about what this is. Um, remember that there's hurtful consequences when we do this. But don't be deceived or, let it, or be lied to. I want you to, when you start investing your emotional energy outside the home, outside your husband, because, you know, we have only a certain amount of energy, and you can either spend it with your husband or you can spend it someplace else. I do encourage you, as I said, though, to have girlfriends that you can talk to. It's so key and important to have them. But one of the big things about the difference between a platonic relationship with someone and an emotional uh, affair, emotional infidelity, is you want to keep it secret. You don't want to be telling your husband what it is you said or did. That's a big indication that something's wrong. There's something in your spirit that's saying, I should not be doing this. Now, I'm not going to talk to you about what your guys are doing because they've got to take care of themselves. I'm talking to you gals. But I can tell you, when we develop a closer relationship with our husbands and we spend more time with them, then the need for them to talk to somebody else isn't as there as much either. Watch this, Coach. So how do you know if you're having an emotional affair with someone or emotional infidelity? You're withdrawing from your spouse. You're preoccupied with this other person. You daydream about them. I read some romance novels, and you can often tell when someone's falling in love with somebody because they're thinking about them all the time. But that's you and you're married. You're thinking about the wrong person. Maybe you've lost the desire to be intimate with your own husband and you're thinking about this other person. You might just keep saying, oh, we're just friends. That's a key indication of it. No, you're not just, just friends. We can make these relationships online. We can make them in person. We can make them at church. They can be a family member. I was talking with one gal and she said when she went to family events, she always felt really sorry for her husband's brother. And she found herself often talking with him and sympathizing with him and listening to his problems and in a room with himself. And I said, so what's your husband doing? She goes, well, he's over, off and over in the other room making funny faces at me. I said, your husband's feeling challenged or jealous that you're spending too much time with his brother. So when you want to talk to the brother, make sure your husband's in the room. Sit beside your husband and make sure you're touching Maybe it's your holding hands. Maybe it's your thighs are touching. I don't know. 
we were sitting close, and then talk to his brother. Those are ways you can have that platonic relationship and make sure it stays that way with that other person. I talked to you about Chaplain Harp when I had this great relationship with him, talking with him about all kinds of things having to do with the church and ministry in particular and uh, in my life. But we kept the door open. There was other gals around all the time. So how else do we figure this out? Maybe you tend to say, my friend understands me better than my spouse. Gals, it's time to go make some good girlfriends. We need that time with our girlfriends, time to develop those friendships, to find time to spend with them, and to be able to talk and share these things with them. And yes, you must keep those relationships with your girlfriends strong. I have a girlfriend uh, that, that we've been meeting several times a month last year, and, and as this, uh, this new year came around and I wanted to meet with her more often, I realized she and I really and I could talk. We could talk from the depths of our hearts and we could share things. And so we really tried to make more time to be together. And uh, it really is helping both of us. I think we both needed somebody to talk to because we need that close relationship. We need somebody who can really understand us. And sometimes my husband doesn't understand from a girl's point of view. We can't talk about, I can't talk about clothes and hair and nail shops and, and all that kinds of things with my husband. He doesn't really care about that. But what can we do to keep our marriages strong? Remember, it's different. It's starting to become different. If you are wanting to be with your friend, your male friend, more than you're wanting to be with your spouse, you think he understands you better than your spouse does. You find you're being sexually attracted to him. You're looking forward to being with him more than you are being with your spouse. Or when you talk to your spouse, you never mention your male friend. These things start really harming your relationship. So what can we do about it? First off, gals, I mention one thing. I highly encourage you to not be alone in a room with another man. Unless there's very specific reasons. Like for a doctor, a dentist, a maintenance guy coming to the house. If you do have to be there, make sure the doors are open. I mean, not if they got a more, I mean, if you're at the church talking to someone. Um, that's why I like to be a woman counselor for Christian women. We can talk to women about things that we don't, wouldn't say. You know, if you get a husband and wife and a counselor with a male counselor, most of those conflicts are going to be directed at the man, either for him or against him. And they're not going to be directed to the woman. I even sat in a married Sunday school class, and the guys, the, the, the chaplains, the military chaplains, were talking to the guys. And I was thinking, that doesn't apply to the women. It's different for them. Our relationships with our husbands, the way we interact with them are different than men will interact with us. The way we think about things are different. And so that's why the girlfriends are so important. But what else can you do? This is where I'm going to get on my soapbox again. You need girlfriends and you need to be in that regular weekly date with your husband. Doing something fun. Whether it's a movie at home, it's going into town. We're, we watched a movie last night, last week, for a date. And I don't really want to watch a movie again tomorrow night for our date. So I'm trying to think of what can we do fun. I got an idea. And maybe I'm trying to figure out where we're going to go do it. I'm thinking about going into a store I haven't been to yet in the town that's about an hour away from us. And going to find a Bible study book I wanted to do. And then maybe we can find a great place to go get dessert mm, fun something fun something different maybe, maybe you know if the weather is going to hold maybe we go play putt-putt golf but when we do these fun things with our spouses whether it's at home watching a movie or it's at home sitting on the back porch having coke and candy bars while the kids watch watch cartoons when we have these fun times with our spouses then we start to develop this time to talk and we want to talk about everything not just you need a regular date night. You need to find 10 to 15 minutes a day where you can talk with your husband. Tell him about the little things that happen. Tell him about the little irritants. Tell him about how you feel about things. I'm not talking about complaining, criticizing, or trying to control him. I'm talking about talking about you, how you feel. And yeah, sometimes I think my husband's a really good listener because you know what he says? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Good. Awesome. Love it. Yeah, and every once in a while he'll give you some advice. Sometimes he's learned to ask for advice. But make sure you're dating your husband. Make sure you, you, here's another way to keep that connection close with your husband. 
touching. Up to five touches a day, whether it's kisses, hand holding, snuggling. Sometimes I like to tell gals under my, my, my marriage studies to touch your husband for 20 minutes a day and see what happens. You know, it's in that touching relationship that we draw closer together. And it gets that, that physical connection actually brings us more emotionally together. Spend time with your husband. Don't bury all the arguments. I, I, I'm going to have a, a, a master class soon, and, and um, I'm going to be talking this time about, about how to start to stop yelling and start talking. How do you have those discussions? And so you may want to check that out. But think about that. How can we have conversations with our spouse? To talk about the things that really bother us, not yell at them, not trying to change them, not, but we need to talk about those. It's when we don't talk about those that we go look for somebody else to talk to. And maybe your husband's not the right person. Maybe it's a girlfriend. Maybe you need a coach. I don't know. But you need to talk about it, not just bury it, because then you get attracted to the wrong person. Um, and this gal, let go and have an all-out romantic night. Make it out love with your husband at least once a month, once a week. You know, when you get that sexual connection built with your husband, the desire for either you or he to look elsewhere is not there as much. Some people it might be, but golly, when you're satisfied and connect and connecting at home, the other grass doesn't look so green. You start to see the brown spots, or it's just it's got as many brown spots as your grass does. <laughs> So what can we do? Let me tell you about some other stories here. I talked to you about the one gal with her, with her brother-in-law and uh, trying to watch the connection there, that it was not being, being something it should not be, didn't develop into a relationship it shouldn't. There was one gal that contacted me, and, and her husband had, had told her that she'd had an affair, and he filed for divorce, and so to protect her financial assets, she filed for divorce too. But then she called me, and I thought, because what they're saying, I mean, God really convicted me that, that we could save their marriage. At least she could learn how to be a woman that he might want again. And if not, she'd be the woman that she wanted to be to live without him. And I must tell you, the, the, the awesome ending to this story is that they did have, get back together again. There was forgiveness, and they recommitted their vows to each other and got remarried. Um, they had never really divorced, but they felt like they needed to remarry and restate their vows to each other. But one of the things that happened, this guy traveled a lot for work. And in his travels... Um, he traveled, he had a, a certain gal partner in his business that he traveled with a lot. And um, they got to know each other. And then he and his wife weren't talking and he and his wife weren't having sex. And she didn't want to go on any trips with him. And um, the business partner seemed more interesting than the wife. So what did I really do about that? First off, remember, we can't change him. We had to let him just be over there by himself and deal with himself and deal with his own things. But I talked with the wife. I said, first off, has he ever asked you to go on a trip with him? She said, yes. I said, what did you say? She said, nah. I thought I was too busy with the kids. I didn't feel good. Didn't, you know, I'd always just said, you need to figure out how to go on a business trip with him. He's asking you to go. He wants you to go. And when you're there, the attraction of the other woman won't be there because you'll be there. It really does go away. So as things started to get better, she told me, she says, I am scheduled now to go with him to a couple different places. They were going down to get a business trip to Mexico, and they were going some other places together. And she says, I've learned to figure out how to take care of the kiddos. She started getting healthier herself. She started working out. She started eating better. Um, and so she was feeling better. They started, she learned how to not criticize him or correct him, but how to, how to talk with him in a way that would let him really be able to hear her heart and be able to listen to him in the same way. Thanks for joining me. So glad you're here and appreciate this. This is not one of those easy conversations to have, but we can develop good relationships with our husbands. We have to spend the time. We have to choose to spend the time. You need to work at making your husband your best friend and your lover. Then the attraction of the other man is not there. It's good to have guys to talk to. And when my husband travels, we were going, our small group was going out to dinner. And one of my good girlfriends, she asked me, she said, would you like my husband and I to pick you up? Another way to protect me when I'm going out in a mixed group without my husband. My girlfriend and her husband were there to protect me. Do I need protectors? I'm, 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 a, I'm a senior woman. I'm a grandma. Yes, I do. I needed protection. 
someone. And then when I sat at that table, I had a girlfriend on either side of me. Why? You say, isn't that a little bit too much choice? No, it's not. No, no, it's not. Because that sexual attraction is always there. We, men are attracted to women and women are attracted to men. So we need to make sure that we place that attraction on the person it belongs to, our husband. Uh, thank you, Linda. Appreciate that. It's not always easy to talk about this, but we can. We can talk about keeping that relationship strong with our husband. So remember, some little tips. First off, make sure you're dating your husband. Make sure you have a close girlfriend you can talk to. Both of those are so key. Make sure that then you may figure out how to have awesome sex with your husband. It's part of what keeps your relationship together and makes it different than any other relationship in the world. And then to protect yourself from being alone with men when it's inappropriate. In other words, don't share your hurts about your marriage with another guy, okay? Unless he is a counselor, and then I suggest you have your husband with you when you're doing that. But even so, I prefer a woman counselor and coach. Just thought I'd say. Of course I am one, not speaking about toot my own horn or ear, but that's what I do because I think it's the right thing to do. Yes, my husband will talk to men, and yes, we'll talk to couples together. But there is a time that we need to share things with another woman. So let me just review for you. It is sex, emotional infidelity when you're being more connected to a man, or I'm talking to your gals, to someone other than your, someone connected more to a man than you are to your own husband. You're sharing more emotional things with him than you are with your own husband. You're keeping secrets from your husband about when you talk to this other man, or you're keeping it hidden on your computer that you don't want him to know you're talking to him. Um, all of those things are getting emotionally involved in someone else. Now, how do you break that? You break off that relationship, you have nothing more to do with it, and you focus on your husband. You start talking to him, finding 10 to 20 minutes a day you can talk to each other. Maybe it's over a cup of coffee at bedtime, decaf or tea or whatever. You start touching your husband, giving him that kiss, giving him a hug, sitting beside him. You stop criticizing, condemning, and complaining to your husband, and then he's more of the guy you want to be with, and he gets more focused on you. And then when you do need to talk with someone else of the opposite sex, make sure a door is open or there's someone else in the room with you. It's simple little things to protect yourself. There's so much of this willy-nilly stuff going on, I don't, you know, that, that just isn't right. But we can have strong, great, awesome marriages. And they can last a lifetime. But we have to work at it. I've wondered, you know, I have to be honest, I've wondered what would I do when my husband passed? Would I feel like I could date other men? And I would have to totally change my mindset. But that's not where I am today. I'm a married woman. And I love my husband. And I want to spend time with him. And if your relationship is starting to feel strained between you and your husband, work on it. Stop criticizing him. Stop trying to control him. Start treating him like you would your best friend. I had one gal write on Facebook, um, Facebook to me the other day. Uh, and if you haven't joined my Love Your Life, Love Your, Love Your Marriage Facebook group, it was a great, great group. And we, one of the gals was sharing there. That she, um, that she and her husband had decided to start saying please and thank you for all the little things they did in their house. And it totally changed the relationship. That they had grown closer just by saying please and thank you. Treating each other with respect. And then do some of those fun, crazy things. I tell you, I don't, you know, maybe you can't do what you used to do. I can't go, I, my body won't do the stuff it used to do. It's gotten older. But I still keep trying to think of what's some fun, crazy things we can go do together. I was just speaking yesterday at another group, and I have to share this one with you, and then we'll go. But here is a fun date idea. It's called 20 turns, 20 turns, two, zero turns, 20 turns. And what you do is you, you pack a picnic uh, snack or a dinner, and it's 20 turns and a penny. And the penny, heads is, heads is say left, and, and tails is right. Or you might make them the other way around, left and right. Heads is one, tails is one. And so you go to the first intersection and you flip the coin. And then you throw that direction. And you go to the next intersection and you flip the coin. And we're taking the left or right turn, 20 turns. So you can go to anywhere. You Maybe you don't want to start in your housing area because you know you'll just end up back at your own house or something. But you, can, but you go until there's a turn. And then you stop, you pull over to the side of the road, flip the coin, and then, and then decide where you're going to go. When you get to 20, I haven't made 20 choices left and right. Then you stop and have a picnic. 
or sit in your car, see if there's a place around you can have a picnic, or sit there and have your own snack and just chuckle over the fun you've had. You know, there's fun, free, inexpensive things we can do that are different just to do something fun. And yes, I know some of you socializers, like Goldie there, can have lots of fun. Some of us need tons of ideas. But think about that. How can you have more fun with your husband? Then you, don't, then you avoid that emotional attachment to someone else. If you have questions or comments about this, I'd, I'd love for you to put them in the comment section or send me a message. I would love to hear about that too. And um, I, I want to encourage you. You can keep your relationship strong. Date your mate. Talk to him. Focus on him. Share your hurts and concerns with him. Don't criticize, but be polite and treat him like your best friend. Let me see what some of these folks have said here. Uh, treat, start treating your 